Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer celebrated Carrie Lake's loss to Katie Hobbs in Arizona's close gubernatorial contest. Last night, the Republican nominee and former broadcaster failed in her attempt to defeat Arizona's Democratic Secretary of State. Schumer, who has retained his position as majority leader thanks to a better-than-expected showing by Democrats in the midterms, called MAGA Republicanism a, quote, total loser. Lake had tied herself incredibly close to former President Trump and was even considered a potential running mate should the 45th president win his party's nomination in the upcoming 2024 presidential election. Lake also led in several polls prior to the election. Hobbs instead prevailed, with many believing that Lake's constant 2020 election denialism may have cost her a winnable race. I ask unanimous consent the quorum be dispensed with. Without objection. Mr. President, first on respect for marriage, the 117th Congress, Mr. President, will go down, I believe, as one of the most successful Congresses we've seen in decades. We're also proud of that fact. Over the last two years, this chamber has passed historic and bipartisan bills that covered everything from infrastructure to gun safety to chips and science to veterans aid and more. Again, a common theme for many of these bills was bipartisanship. Very soon, the Senate can add to our accomplishments when we vote to proceed on the Respect for Marriage Act. For information of all senators, we'll hold our first procedural vote on this bill tomorrow. And after that, I hope both sides can work quickly together to move this bill through the Senate and onto the President's desk. I firmly believe that passing bipartisan marriage protections would be one of the, most, one of the more significant accomplishments in what's already been a significantly productive Congress. It will do so much good for so many people who want nothing more than to live their lives without the fear of discrimination. And make no mistake that passing the Respect for Marriage Act is as personal as it gets for many of us in this chamber, myself included. So we want to get this done as soon as we can. A mere decade ago, marriage discrimination was legal in many places across the country. And just a few months ago, when the Supreme Court overturned Roe, Justice Thomas wrote in a concurring opinion that Oberg Obergefell, which recognized the constitutional right to same-sex marriage, could similarly be overturned. I hope that never happens, but the Senate can eliminate the risk of LGBTQ Americans having their rights curtailed if we act now to codify marriage protections into law. Now, the Respect for Marriage Act is precisely the kind of bill that Democrats and Republicans can rally around together, and which Americans across the country want to see us work on. It already passed the House earlier this year with significant 47 Republican votes and I'm optimistic we can achieve a similar result in this chamber. Senators Baldwin, Sinema, and a number of my Republican colleagues, including Senators Collins and Portman and Tillis, have done excellent work building support for this bill, and I want to recognize all their efforts here on the floor. I hope that at minimum, 10 Republicans will be ready to throw their support behind this sound common sense bill. Millions of people will be better off if we're able to work together on this important and highly personal issue. And so I urge all of us to vote yes when the time comes to move forward tomorrow. Now on the midterm elections and MAGA Republicanism. Over the past week, there's been a lot of discussion here in Washington and across the media about how the results of these midterms defied history and defied conventional wisdom. I remember back in April and May, no way Democrats are going to keep the majority. They're going to lose a whole bunch of seats. And people are asking what happened. Well, I think the answer, however, is rather simple. This year, Democrats ran with strong candidates. We compiled an extremely strong legislative record, which the candidates could run on. And Republicans, on the other hand, ran with flawed candidates who spent more time talking about MAGA extremism than the things that truly mattered to the American people. 
After the failures, Republican failures, in elections in 2018 and 2020 and now in 2022, I hope the message is sinking in. If Republicans continue to embrace MAGA radicalism, they're going to keep losing. So for their own sake, but more importantly, for the sake of the country, I hope that very soon the GOP rejects the MAGA wing and makes a commitment to work with Democrats in the next Congress. The worst thing Republicans can do right now is to double down on the MAGA platform and embrace gridlock. But sadly, it seems that's the path that some on the other side still want to take. In fact, Senator Rick Scott of Florida, who notoriously led the unsuccessful Republican Senate campaign efforts, recently suggested that one of the reasons Republicans lost on Election Day was because they actually worked too much with Democrats to pass bipartisan legislation, that they weren't MAGA enough. That defies all logic. If Republicans want to follow Rick Scott's lead, make our day. Following Senator Scott is like following a blind man right over the cliff. Remember, it was Senator Scott who released a platform calling for tax hikes on working and middle, middle Americans, which our candidates reminded people of in the election over and over again. It was Senator Scott who threatened to put Medicare and Social Security on the chopping block, which again was one of the most powerful arguments for why Republicans were wrong for the country. And it was Senator Scott who embraced Trump and believed that the MAGA wing was the road to success, that denying the elections, that spreading the big lie, encouraging the MAGA extreme wing was the right thing to do. The American people knew better. America ran, American voters ran in the opposite direction and voted for Democrats, including Many Republicans who said, I may be a Reagan Republican, I may be a Bush Republican, but this Republican Party ain't one for me. After three failed elections, three in a row, it should be obvious that breaking, embracing Magna is total, a total loser for the Republican Party. If anyone thinks otherwise, just look what happened last night in purple Arizona. Katie Hobbs, the Democratic nominee for governor, was declared the winner in her race against Carrie Lake. Everyone thought Carrie Lake would win because of her communication skills, but even she lost. Proof positive that MAGA just doesn't work. I earnestly hope that in the next couple of months, Republicans will realize it's better for the country and even better for their party to focus instead on working with Democrats over the next two years to get things done for the American people. Now, I know this is not going to happen overnight in the next week or two. Our immediate focus, of course, is the lame duck, where there's a lot of work to be done. But when the dust settles come January, and Republicans have hopefully resolved some of their own internal fights, we hope that at least some of them will realize that the scorched earth MAGA policy is a failure, not only for America, but for them. The usual pundits and skeptics and critics are saying, oh, this won't happen. But look at the major bills we did this summer. Five of them, major bills, bipartisan. And before that, the BIF bill, the postal bill, all done bipartisan, significant legislation. We Democrats are going to work hard to replicate that effort. Americans are tired of the chaos. They're tired of the MAGA insanity. They're tired of the MAGA attack on the very roots of our democracy. They want leaders who will take their problems seriously. They know that Donald Trump, too, most Americans know that Donald Trump is out for himself and only for himself even if it hurts democracy, even if it hurts the Republican Party. Republicans should learn that lesson or risk even more failure in the future.
Now, let me finish, Mr. President, on a truly bittersweet note. Over the many years I've had the honor of serving in public service, I learned that there are a handful of genuinely irrefutable troops, and one of them certainly applied for me my whole career, is that no senator can hope to succeed without the help of an amazing team of staffers that get you through the day, sometimes merely get you through the hour. Another truth I've learned is there's never an easy way to say goodbye. Well, today, both of those truths come together as I say goodbye to one of my most trusted staffers, my amazing communications director, Justin Goodman. It's hard to remember the days before Justin was a part of my team. Like so many on my staff, he first joined the office as an intern back in the summer of 2009, where he quickly demonstrated his talent, his dedication, his knack for communications, which was obviously totally an alien concept for me, shy as I might be. A couple of years later, Justin returned to work at the DPCC as a full-time member of my staff, and I am sure even he had no idea of what kind of roller coaster he was in for in the years to come. Indeed, when he first on my team as a full-time staffer, Congress was in the midst of a brutal government shutdown and had to wait three whole weeks before being able to come to the office or get paid. What a way to start. Well, that was his introduction to the Schumer operation. And every day since then has been an absolute joy, for me at least, maybe not always for him. Over the years that Justin worked on my team, from his years leading the DPCC, to working as my national press secretary, to serving as my communications director, he's become one of the people I lean on most to get through the day. To call him indispensable would be an understatement. One of the things I'm going to miss is dialing 55 on my cell phone about 50 times a day. <laughs> to describe Justin as one of the most decent people I know doesn't even begin to touch it. So let the record show that Justin began his time on my team in the midst of a shutdown and now departs as we finish one of the most successful sessions in recent memory. It's a pretty great record if you ask me. So Justin, I don't want to look at you because I'll get a little weepy. So Justin, thank you so much for your work over the many years. My best to you, my very best to your loved ones and your new little ones. And I, think, I don't think I need to tell you that you will always, always, always be part of the family here in Schumerland. I yield the floor.